How's it going? This is Guinness Global Brand Ambassador Donald Marnell. Today I am at Dirty Nelly's in beautiful Perth uh, in WA. I'm going to be showing you how to pour the perfect pint of Guinness Draft because every season is perfect for a Guinness. So it all starts with your Guinness glass. The Golden Harp, right above where it says Guinness, can be used as a target. And it's really, really simple as long as you know where the harp is at all times. To begin, you're going to take the glass, point the nozzle directly at the Golden Harp, and take a hold of the tap, and in one swift motion, you'll just pull it all the way down. You'll hear that hissing noise. I'll explain that in just a moment. But the key here is to start to even the glass out just as the beer reaches the harp. And then you're going to stop the pour at the top of the golden harp. So you've actually got a little bit of space to work with here. Anywhere from the middle to the top of that golden harp will give you the right sized uh, foam. What you're looking at here is the most picturesque part of any beer pour. Always makes me thirsty when I see this. When we pour a pint of Guinness, you're actually adding millions upon millions of tiny microscopic nitrogen bubbles. They're what's going to cascade through the body of the beer. So all that storminess that you see through the body, that's going to start to clear over the next 90 seconds or so. And all that nitrogen gas will move up to the top and it'll form the iconic white foam. Now the reason for this is, for many, many years, we've been brewing beer for 260 years at St. James's Gate in Dublin. But for the last 60 years, we've produced this exact style of Guinness, which is called Guinness Draft. And what makes it different from a lot of other beers, similar to our, another beer in our range called Kilkenny, is the addition of this nitrogen gas. Now, if you drink a lager or pale ale or any sort of carbonated drink, what you'll notice is that when you first get the pint or the schooner, whatever you may have, um, it'll be quite carbonated, quite effervescent. But as you start to drink, the oxygen takes away some of that CO2 and the beer starts to go flat. What we're doing with Guinness Draft and with Kilkenny is we are creating a beer that only has about 30% as many CO2 bubbles as a lager or any of those carbonated drinks. And most of the gas actually rests above. What that does is it protects your beer. It keeps all the flavor in, it keeps all the texture in, it keeps all the aroma in, and it means you can enjoy your beer for longer without having to worry about it losing its flavor, without having to worry about it going flat. You will see that little bit of a change in appearance there's a myth about Guinness. We, we do have a nickname back in Ireland that we say that St. James's Gate Brewery is the home of the black stuff. But you'll actually see, if you look very closely, that Guinness isn't black at all. It's actually what we call a really dark, ruby red color. How are you, fella? No, oh, no, you're all right, come on. This is the man behind the magic over here, and he's a bit camera shy, so anyway. We'll get back to the beer. You'll just see this nitrogen, sorry, you'll just see the color start to come. So the nitrogen's up here, but the ruby red hue is starting to come down through. It's not actually a black beer, you'll see it in the light. It's very, very dark ruby red. As the nitrogen has started to vacate, we're now starting to get things ready for the second part of the pour. And all we're gonna do now, is we're gonna hold the glass directly underneath the tap. The second time around, you're gonna push the tap away. When you push a Guinness tap away, it comes out a slower flow. So you're not actually gonna get it zipping out of the tap like it did the first time. You're gonna get less nitrogen gas, so you're not gonna impact the size of the head. But as well as that, um, something that's very, very key is glass positioning. So you'll often see a lot of bartenders at this point just leave the glass down there. We say that's a big, big no-no. You wanna hold it as close as possible to the nozzle, but without actually dipping it in. So there's a sweet spot, we hold the glass right here. That's to stop any unsightly bubbles in the head. But naturally, we don't want this going in. That's put on by hand every day. So for hygiene's sake, we keep it out. You want a little easy way to remember it? If ever in doubt, keep the spout out of the stout. There you go, get that on a t-shirt. You're gonna hold it just underneath, as I mentioned. This time you're gonna push it away. It comes out much slower, much easier to control the pour. And then you're gonna stop the pour when you'll see that the foam is just peaking above the rim. So you know, Nice meniscus that you see there, but obviously without spilling a single drop. The great thing about a pint of Guinness is because of that surface tension, because of the nitrogen that's holding on the very top, if you've done it correctly, it'll actually be a difficult beer to spill. What you'll see is you can actually move the beer around quite a bit and it's not gonna come out over the edge. Now the final, and this is where my real expertise comes in, the final part is obviously teaching you how to enjoy Guinness. So if you haven't had a pint of Guinness before, sometimes people make the mistake where they just sip the foam and they don't actually get down to the beer. So I always say, if you drink a Guinness correctly, it should leave you with a mustache right up here. You wanna drink through the foam, get underneath to that lovely rich uh, coffee and dark chocolate flavored beer that lies beneath. 
and it should look a little something like this. So I'll say to you the Irish word for cheers, which is slauncha, and that means to your good health. So slauncha.